Recreation centers that, that have been slated maybe we're going to have to slow down on some of the capital projects that are there. It's still... Uh, this afternoon, the House panel voted to uh, impose or direct uh, private school vouchers on the District of Columbia. Uh, moving aside whether or not vouchers is a good uh, public policy, or and give and let's assume that everyone supports high quality education, good teachers in the classroom, uh, and, and, and improve DC public school system. The question I'm posing to each of you is what is your thought on the fact that the House panel is imposed vouchers on a, the District of Columbia? given that the delegate from the District of Columbia is opposed to the process, the mayor is opposed to it, and that district residents in a referendum voted against a voucher program in the District of Columbia. Should this matter be an issue that is reserved locally rather than coming down from uh, uh, the Congress, given that public education is supposedly a local issue. And uh, I'll let you, uh, I'll let whoever wants to jump out first stop. Well, I'll just say absolutely. I mean, I'm for, I'm for DC State a little. Any opportunity that's going to allow the District of Columbia to determine its outcome, certainly when it comes to local issues like education. I don't, I'm not going to speak to the qualifications of, of the Congress, but I'll tell you that if they're not going to respect the experiences and insight and expertise that comes from a local government, then we're already down the road that's not going to be healthy short term or long term. I think any message that says to a, a local jurisdiction like the District of Columbia, as unique as it is, with the kind of international influence we carry, uh, that you're not capable of making certain decisions as it pertains to the future of your children, we have to take a look at what it is, what's the basis of which they continue to send that message to our city leaders. I am absolutely against uh, any message that uh, congressman on the Hill gets to tell me uh, the way I, I raise and educate and funnel my children through the public school system. That absolutely is a local uh, leadership issue. I, I agree. I mean, uh, look, we're, we're political football. I mean, every year when it's a, when the Congress swings Democrat, uh, they will add certain things that the district never asked for. When it swings Republican, they'll take away things that they never asked our opinion for. If anyone remembers back to the delegate debate last year uh, where Utah was going to receive an additional vote in, in Congress and DC's delegate was going to be allowed to vote in Congress. The compromise essentially collapsed. Why? Because they wanted to put all of these gun provisions into it to change DC's handgun laws. Um, to, to me, it's like we always are constantly in political football. Sometimes uh, money that, that has been designated for, for help uh, gets pulled away under Republican Congress. Uh, right now, we're actually seeing a fight where potentially Congress is looking to take it away about $80 million, already compounding uh, what we have in, in, a, in a budget crisis in, in the city. Um, there has to be an end to this. There has to be some sort of end of I, I myself, uh, I think like the other candidates here, uh, I'm pro-statehood. I always have been pro-statehood. Uh, but there has to be some sort of resolution at the end because we can't live in this colonial sort of way. Uh, there are 185 capitals in the world, and there's only one where their people are not allowed to vote in their parliament. To Washington, D.C. Uh, yeah, um, I'm D.C. State of Green. I'm 100% statehood, and revolution is the key word. Uh, if you look around the world, you look at uh, you look in uh, Libya, you look in Egypt, you look at Yemen. Uh, you got people all over the world fighting for their freedom, taking it to the streets, and saying, "Hey, we we want a right to have our voices heard." Right here in the district, we're uh, the capital of the uh, the so-called uh, leader of the free world, and um, we have no no voice. In our in our own legislature, so uh, we pay a huge uh, huge amount of taxes, uh, as much as uh, equal to the amount paid by South Carolina, for example. And they have two senators, of course, they have representation in the House. We have none of that. Um, obviously, yeah, there should be total autonomy. If the people in the District of Columbia say we're not interested in vouchers, the mayor says I'm not interested in vouchers. Uh, that's where it stops, and quite frankly, uh, Congress shouldn't uh, step in and, and decide to impose their judgment on the District of Columbia. There, there are all kinds of issues. It's, it's paternalistic. Uh, uh, 
this used to be a, a, a Jim Crow town, and some people still have a Jim Crow attitude up there in Congress, and uh, and they think that you know they can basically uh, enforce their will upon us, and that we're uh, the we're out here in the field, and and uh, Capitol Hill is the big house, and uh, I think it's 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 time for us to you know fight to be liberated. Uh, statehood is is the way. That's the that's the only way we can get this foot off of our neck, so we don't have these conversations over and over again. And Congress isn't constantly meddling in our affairs. These people aren't from here. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna leave out of here when their term in Congress is over with and go back to wherever they come from. And uh, quite frankly, they should have no say whatsoever in what happens locally here in the district. And uh, uh, also, by the way, I, I, as far as options go, um, I think that uh, uh, public uh, public.